second to do my book reviews. My husband's out working and doing some construction today too, so if you hear a saw, that's why. But um, I just finished a book and I think that we need to go through it because, wow, um, it was really scary. Um, so the book that I read was Rain on a Distant Roof by Vanessa Farnsworth. Can you guys see it okay? So, it's a book about Lyme disease, but it's a book about a lot of things. It's, it's a very raw, very angry, very honest book. It follows the struggle of a woman as she tries to go through what I think was Lyme disease and reoccurring tick fever that she got through a tick bite. Um, but the struggle is... It's almost a torture that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even use on people anymore. Um, it it explains the pain that she goes through, the confusion, and everything else that she goes through, in such a real and horrid way that there were times when I had to put this book down and just like think for a minute because some of the things were just that horrible, and it really brought to light how horrid um, and and really sickening and, and embarrassing our healthcare system is. Um, I know everybody outside of Canada is saying, thinks that we're wonderful because we have free healthcare, but in reality we only have free healthcare if whatever disease or illness you're working on fits into their um, puzzle of, of what they feel they can treat you with. And the problem too with doctors, and, and she had this issue as well, and I have the issue with Canadian doctors more so with my husband who has rheumatoid arthritis and doctors look at him like he's nothing like he doesn't matter and because the pain of the rheumatoid arthritis hasn't gone away even though they've given him strong uh, pain medications that alter your brain chemistry and alter how you actually function because those didn't work we're like not even worth their time and I find a lot of doctors have this like well I'm treating you for free look how wonderful I am persona about them that it, it's very hard to even go to an emergency room or talk to a doctor about anything serious because we're not taken seriously and like me being in the veterinary field because we can't listen to our our animal patients we try very hard to read body language we try very hard to to listen in other ways to find out what's going on to do the diagnostics and find out and the sickening thing is there are doctors who can talk to us, who can, who can listen to what we're saying, and they don't. And half the time, they don't even, like, I went up for a checkup once, and the doctor didn't even touch me before he prescribed stuff. They don't listen. It's almost like they, they feel they're so much above us, and so much more educated than we are, that they don't need to listen to the little peon saying that he hurts, because I know better. You know? And... It's, it's a sorry, sorry state of affairs where I would much rather go to a veterinary clinic and get treatment than I would go to, to a human hospital. And this, this book kind of points that out because this poor woman has been struggling for years with Lyme disease and the disease has been destroying her body. And she was told anywhere from, um, you're making this up, to it's not as bad as you think, to you just want the attention to there was one doctor that she went in and, and tried to say okay these are all my symptoms this is what I'm feeling and he's like you're obviously doing this for attention you pick one symptom and I'm gonna treat one symptom and we're gonna leave it at that what doctor does that what doctor does that oh I know our Canadian doctors and I'm not saying that all of Canada's health care sucks and all of Canada's doctors suck there are good doctors out there and there are doctors that will listen but they're few and far between and finding a new one often takes traveling and money and there are people with this Lyme disease problem that are going to the United States for treatment and testing because our medical facilities aren't up to par and this woman I'm, I'm very impressed with because this woman refuses to spend money when we have free health care she refuses to go and spend the millions of dollars trying to cure herself in a different country um, she was able to find a naturopath to help her and the problem with natural paths is they're, they're not regulated, they're not licensed, so you can get bad ones of those too. But when you have doctors who just don't give a shit and, and nowhere else to turn, what are you going to do? Um, and this book really brought in that frustration 
about where are you going to go? You've got doctors who just don't care. You've got people, in general, you've got people who don't care, which that's a whole other tangent that I'm not going to go on. But when the people who are supposed to be healing you, who are supposed to be wanting you to feel better, are more worried about their money and politics than about making you feel better, there's something seriously wrong. And this book brings it out. Now, with all of that being the backstory in the background, through all of that, she then brings out her story of what she struggled through. And then there's a plethora of knowledge about Lyme disease in here. There is so much more knowledge in this book than I have read anywhere else. And yet it's still not, like there's still stuff missing. We still don't know what Lyme disease is, what it does, how it really works. There's a lot of, of guessing and, and maybes, but we don't really know how it works. We just know that it's, it's an enemy that's, perfect in its conquering ways and that it's like nothing else that we've ever dealt with it's a bacteria with a genetic code like that never how does that even like bacteria don't have genetic codes viruses have genetic codes so that's how they can like steal our bodies and 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 deal with what the issues are um so all in all it was a really really good book um a bit of a scary read because a lot of the symptoms and stuff that she went through um, that she was struggling with, I, I had to wait a few minutes and just, just sit and stop reading because I was getting so angry, um, and, and frustrated with, with how, how she was being treated and the pain that she was going through. It just, it just wasn't, wasn't something I could continue to read. So even though this book was, what, under 200 pages? Yeah, even though this book was under 200 pages, it took me like all week to read because I would hit sections where I'm like, okay, I just, I gotta sit down and, and not think about this because it's getting me angry. <laughs> it's, it, everybody in Canada needs to read this. Everybody in uh, tick known areas need to read this. It's just, it, it, it should be required reading for everybody in Canada. It should be required reading for anybody worried about Lyme. Let me read the back of it, and then we can finish this review, and I can get it posted because I haven't done a lot of a lot of stuff on um, my Goodreads. All right. So by 2020, it's estimated that more than 80% of the population of Eastern Canada will be living in regions that are endemic for Lyme disease, and the number of infections are expected to soar. Yet what remains unknown about this debilitating illness continues to trump what is known, placing the health of Canada increasingly at risk. Rain on a Distant Roof uses the latest in scientific and medical research to explore the considerable challenges that have been placed on Lyme disease at the center of the most fractious debate in modern medicine. And that's putting it mildly. There is so much debate on this. These challenges include the inability of doctors to properly diagnose the illness. The tests don't work at all. Like the tests, the test for Lyme disease tests the antibodies, but because Lyme disease is such a good bacteria and getting under the, the body's radar, sometimes there aren't any antibodies to be tested because they haven't been detected yet. And if there aren't any antibodies, how are you going to get your test? Um, the absence of reliable medical tests and the reliance on controversial treatment guidelines, you can't, you're telling me, and a public health response that is at best problematic. Public health is scary. Along the way, readers are introduced to the bizarrely intelligent bacterium at the root of the Lyme disease, the bac a, bac a bacterium so strange that scientists describe it in terms of normally reserved for creatures found only in science fiction. And that isn't even, that isn't even um, exaggeration. The, this bacteria is scary. By the authors whose own terrifying battle with the disease unfolds before the reader's eyes. This groundbreaking book, a compelling mixture of biography and scientific discovery, is a must read for anyone who spends time in nature or even in their own backyards. That can't be more true. Um, all in all, you guys just need to read this book. Keep yourself protected. Know what, what's up. Yeah, read the book, guys. I need to find a lighter book because I'm pretty scared after reading this one. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got to do for my book club, and thank you for listening, and I will let you know when I have another book read. Thanks, guys.